Now let me show you these clips. On these clips as well, the basic concepts are same. So if I turn off the color grading on this adjustment clip, then you can see this is the grading that I did. And these are the clip level color correction. If I turn off all the nodes and turn on one by one, then you can see the first thing I did was to convert the footage from SLOG 3 to X709 on this CST node. Same settings from SLOG 3 to X709. Then in this offset node, I corrected the exposure. So this was before and this is after. Then you can see there are a bit of noise. So in this noise reduction node, I reduced the noise and I went for a pretty high number that is 75 because with this grade, I wanted to get a softer film look because I was going for a Kodak 2383 look. So my objective was to get rid of the digital 4K sharpness and make it look like it was shot on film. So that is why I went for a pretty high noise reduction. Then on this CC node, I have color corrected the image before the color space transform. So on this CC node, you can see I have created a slight S curve to give the footage a bit of contrast. Then I increased the color boost to around 10. And then in this hue versus saturation curve, I increased the saturation of this red hues that is of a dress. Then I didn't do anything else on this node. There is another node that is called the vignette. So in this node, I have added a slight vignette. So if I turn on this node, you can see I have taken a circular mask and then tracked it to her face. Then I inverted the mask with this button. So this is the original mask. And if I invert it, then you can see the effect is working outside of the mask, not inside of the mask. And with this custom curve, I reduce the exposure of the edges of the frame. And I have also blurred those edges as well. So this was before and this is after. So my subject pops out a bit more. Then on this skin node, if I turn this on, you can see I have a mask. So if I turn on this show mask option, you can see I have selected the skin tones and then reduce the mid-tone detail to soften up the skin. And also in the hue versus hue curve, I have tried to fix the skin tones. So before it was looking like this and after the correction, it looks like this. A slight adjustment, but it fixed the skin tones. And finally, in this compression node, I took the output of the alpha from this node to this node so that in this node, I don't have to qualify the skin once again. With this connection, what it's doing is this node is taking the alpha output of this node as an input. So you just need to qualify the skin once in this node and you can take the alpha output of that node to another node with this technique. So you don't have to key out the skin once again. So in this node also, if I turn on the show mask option, you can see the same mask is being applied over here in this node as well. And what I did on this node is I took the color compressor OFX plugin and I took the key picker and clicked on a skin tone and then compressed the hue and saturation to blend all the variation in the skin tones in a much more smoother way. So if I compress the hue too much and the saturation also, then you can see all the colors are being compressed to this target color. So if I change that target color to red, then what it's doing is it's taking all these colors and trying to compress all the colors into this target color. So this is the basic functionality of this plugin. Let's reset it. So I took the picker and took a skin color. So you can see there are a variation in skin tones, right? Here you can see the skin tone is lighter. And as you go towards this, the skin tone becomes darker. So I wanted to blend the skin tones a bit more and I wanted to make all these colors similar to this color. So for that, I have to increase the hue saturation slider. So you can see the colors are blending more smoothly. So this was before and this is after. So this plugin is pretty handy. So this is the color correction that I did. Now, if I go to this clip here also, the same thing is happening. This is the CST node. Then this is the offset, noise reduction, color correction, vignette, skin, then skin compressor. And I thought this clip needed a bit of boost in the exposure. So that is why in this node, I have brightened up the clip a bit with the custom curve. That's it. Then I copied the same node tree on this clip as well. You can see if I turn off all the nodes, then this is the first thing that I did. That is the CST, then offset, then noise reduction, then color correction, then vignette. Here you can see there are two extra nodes. One is to control the highlights. Here you can see the highlights are a bit blown out. So that is why in this node, I qualified the highlights by turning off this hue and saturation parameter. And only with the luminance parameter, I have selected only the highlights. And then I went to the custom curve and brought down the highlights a bit. So this was before and this is after.
in the gain tab also i kept it at 50 percent opacity and similarly in this shadows node i have lifted up the shadows with the same technique but only opposite so here i have selected only the shadows of the footage and with the help of the custom curve i boosted them a bit so this was before and this is after so what these two nodes are doing is if i turn both of them off so this was before and this is after and finally this is the skin correction and this is the skin compressor and if i take this clip you can see i did similar thing that is color space transform then offset then noise reduction then color correction vignette skin and skin compressor the only thing is in this cc node i've changed the hue of the blue so this was before this was the original color of a shrug but as i wanted to go for the kodak 2383 look and usually in that look the blues are shifted more towards teal or cyan so that is why i shifted the blues towards this color so this is the color correction of these clips now if i show you the color grading part here, what I did is in this first node, I did a grading and I did the grading mostly with the help of the hue versus hue curve. So if I turn this on, you can see the first thing is I added a custom S curve to add some healthy amount of contrast in the image. Because remember, I'm trying to go for a Kodak 2383 look, which usually produces deep, dense colors. And this adjustment clip is on top of all these clips. So this color grading is being applied after the color space transform on top of the Rec. 709 version. So keep that in mind. Then with this hue versus hue curve, I changed the colors a lot. So this was before and after changing the colors, I mostly shifted the reds and the greens. So it's giving me this tone. Now in the hue versus saturation, I didn't do anything here also. I didn't do anything. So only with the custom curve and slight manipulation of the hue versus hue curve, we are getting something like this. So this is a pretty drastic change, right? Now in this node, I have added some saturation with the HSV technique, which is a subtractive saturation technique. So what this saturation slider does is it usually brings up the saturation as well as brightens up the pixels as well, because the working principle of this saturation slider is additive in nature. And to get the filmic saturation look, you need to use subtractive saturation technique. That means the more you increase the saturation, the brightness of the pixels should decrease. So to achieve that, this HSV technique is pretty famous. But in the Vinci Resolve 19, they have added this color slice tool where there is also a saturation slider. And the working principle of this saturation slider is also subtractive in nature. So if you're using the Vinci Resolve 19, then you don't need to set up this HSV node. You can just use this saturation slider inside this color slice tab. I'll make a separate detailed video on this color slice tab. For now, let's see this HSV technique. So what I did is I took a serial node, then right click on it, then go to this color space and change the color space from use timeline to HSV. HSV stands for hue, saturation and value. Hue means colors, saturation means saturation and value means brightness. So all I want to change in this node is the saturation. So I don't need the H and V channels. That's why if I right click on it, and go to these channels, then I can just turn off the channel 1 and channel 3 and leave the channel 2 turned on. That means on this node, only the saturation channel is active. You can also change the gamma of this node to gamma 2.4 as we are working on gamma 2.4. Then this node is set up. Now in this node, if you increase the gain will, the saturation will increase. And if you decrease the gain will, the saturation will decrease. So this gain will is acting as a saturation slider on this node. And this is also working as a subtracting saturation. So in this node, I have added some saturation so this was before and this is after so we can see we are adding a lot of punch to the image and this is looking pretty nice although a bit in your face that we will tackle in the next node so in the next node i have a dedicated saturation node and in this node i have increased the saturation even further so i increased the color boost then in this luma versus saturation i have increased the saturation of the shadows and then in the saturation versus saturation i have increased the saturation of the less saturated pixels and decreased the saturation of the higher saturated pixels so if I turn on the vector scope, you can see this was here. So the red was highly saturated. So with this point, I can control the highly saturated pixels of the image and turn them down. And if I want to turn up the lower saturated pixels, then I can increase this side. So that means I'm increasing the saturation of the less saturated pixels in this image and decreasing the saturation of the highly saturated portions. So it will balance up the saturations in a pretty even way. And in this saturation versus Luma, I have decreased the luminance of the highly saturated pixels. So if I pull this back a bit more, you can see the luminance of the highly saturated pixels are getting lowered. So you can see with these three nodes, I have increased the contrast and saturation of this image a lot. So now let's see the rest of the grid. So here I have taken another node and then by pressing Alt and L, I created a layer node. 
on this node, I'm doing nothing. And on this node, I've decreased the saturation to zero to make it a black and white image. And I blurred the image quite a bit. And if I turn on the merge layer, then you can see it's adding a bleach bypass effect. The composite mode of this merge layer is in soft light. And I controlled the effect of this node with the help of the custom curve. So this was before. If I kept it here, this would have been the total effect. So I pulled up the shadows and pulled down the highlights with the curves. So this three node is adding this bleach bypass effect. Then in this final node, I have controlled the saturation. So I have decreased the saturation to 35 and I have added a slight S curve. I have lifted the shadows and rolled off the highlights a bit to give it a more cinematic contrast. And in this hue versus saturation tab, I've decreased the saturation of the yellows and increased the saturation of the greens and blues. And as I've told you, I wanted to make it look like it's shot on film. So I wanted to get rid of the needle sharpness even more. So that is why I added a bit of blur to the footage to make it even softer. So after all this, I thought it's looking a bit more warm. So to reduce the warmth, I added another node. And in this node, with the help of the custom curve, I manipulated the red channel only. And also with the offset fill, I reduced the redness of the footage. So this was before and this is after. And finally, to add some film look characteristics, I added a glow, halation and a lot of film grain. So this was without the film grain and this is with the film grain. So glow, you can see this is an OFX plugin that you get inside the Venture Resolve. Halation is also an OFX plugin and grain is also an OFX plugin. So this was the entire grading. In my last video, I've discussed how I shot this video, what are all the gears that I've used and how you can also get amazing looking footage with your Sony camera. So if you haven't watched that video yet, then you can click on this card to watch it now.